Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. You're listening to Bulletproof Radio with Dave Asprey. Today's cool fact of the day is that getting goosebumps might actually help you grow more hair. That's because nerves and muscles that raise goosebumps also stimulate stem cells in your skin, which make hair follicles and help hair grow. Harvard University stem cell researchers just reported that getting goosebumps when it's cold probably helps make animals' fur thicker. Nerves that are part of the sympathetic nervous system, which controls your pupil dilation, your heart rate, other things like your autonomic or automatic processes, uh, they nestle next to stem cells that will create hair follicles, which no one knew before this new study. And usually nerves are wrapped in a protective coating called myelin, which you've probably read about in the Bulletproof Diet or Headstrong or something. But it's kind of like the rubber wiring around an uh, around a extension cord. Researchers found that nerve ends were naked where they meet hair follicle stem cells like wires stripped at the tips. That's something you would never imagine is happening going on in your head. And those nerves secrete the hormone norepinephrine, which is necessary for hair growth. And that might explain why hair loss is a side effect of beta blocking drugs, which interfere with norepinephrine's action. However, beta blockers can help you if you have stage fright and anxiety going on stage. I've had a few clients who decided to go that route. I don't think it's the ideal route. You might want to deal with the root cause of that anxiety. But now, you're like, what happens if I don't want to be bald and I want to be a professional speaker? Deal with your crap. Now, you're asking yourself, is Dave going to talk about being a professional speaker or is Dave going to talk about hair? What could it be? Well, at this point, I think you should go with hair because we're going to talk about hair because, well, it's interesting and it's part of living to 180 because if you lived to 180, it would be nice to still have a full head of hair, right? Which when I live past 180, I'd be okay with losing a couple of hairs along the way, but not more than that. And what does this study mean for you? It means that men with male pattern baldness lack these interesting muscles called erector pili muscles in their scalps, which are responsible for goosebumps. And that suggests that sympathetic nerves and goosebump raising muscles might be important in that one type of baldness. So restoring nerves and muscles could cause new hair growth. This is cool because when someone says, you know, we know everything that there is to know about science, therefore what you just noticed isn't possible even though it just happened to you, that kind of ego, well, you show them studies like this, well, we didn't know that before, maybe it was possible and you just didn't have the right study. So when someone says that didn't happen because it can't, you know that they're following a religion, not science. Now, back to hair, because I'm sitting here across from a couple of people with just truly, truly awesome hair. I'm talking about Dr. Sophia Kogan and Dr. Tess Marshall. Uh, now, because I'm interviewing two people with great hair at the same time, and they're both, by the way, from a company called Nutrafol that's been studying how to have healthy hair instead of just how to have hair that doesn't fall out. I'm gonna ask each of them to tell me their voices as I introduce them. So Sophia, say something. Hi, everyone. All right, so Sophia is a integrative hair health expert, and this means for men and women, and she's the chief medical strategist at Nutrafol, and she's written peer-reviewed studies on hair thinning, hair loss treatments, botanical medicine, and has an MD and a dermatology fellowship from, how do you say it, S-U-N-Y, or did you say Sunny? if you're cool? No, it's SUNY. SUNY, SUNY, <laughs> SUNY. And, and they don't like the, the, the word downstate, but it never, it, it wound up never changing to. I'm saying it anyway. <laughs> SUNY Downstate Medical School in Brooklyn, New York. So what, I guess. One of the oldest in the country. One of the oldest, sorry. So it, it's like a big deal. Well, I mean, it's, it's a deal in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in other words, someone who's gone deep on the science and medical side of it. And then you flip over with Dr. Tess. Hi, everyone. It's Tess. Happy to be here. You guys sound really similar. It's going to be so confusing. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. We'll deal with it. So Tess is a naturopathic doctor and director of product science and innovations for Nutrafol. And I wanted to get both of them on the show today because there's the white lab coat MD. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, right now, Sophia is wearing a white lab coat. She has a stethoscope <laughs> uh, around her neck and like looks super medical. She's got those headbands with the little little amplifying light thing on it. Okay, not really. Um, but it, you, you do have that, like I went to medical school kind of vibe, right? And then you have- I do. 
Well, yeah, I mean, like, you're, <laughs> you know, you, you look all professional stuff. And then you cut over to Tess, who's like a naturopath. So she's wearing like a floral dress. She clearly hasn't showered in like two months. And like, she looks like a naturopath. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Perfect. I have dreadlocks in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've offended both my MD friends, by the way, I'm married to an MD, and my naturopath friends. I'm just kidding. Me as uh, well. <laughs> but, but I did want like the more natural, systemic, holistic perspective, as well as like the hard science MD side of things, because... I've never been satisfied with hair stuff. I want to say stuff, the research on it, because it tends to be either all one, where it's like, you know, dip your head in castor oil or something, and it'll all be good. And then on the other hand, it's like, just take some of these pills that might neuter you, and it'll all be good. And so I wanted to sort of have this holistic perspective that says, all right, what's actually going on in there? Um, my understanding is that there's multiple pathways for why hair falls out, why women get thinning hair. So I want to just get to the bottom of it, because I think most people listening, you're in one of three buckets, and we're gonna hit the, all three of these buckets. Okay. One of them is, I'm young and I probably have most of my hair, and I'd like to keep it that way, and I can't imagine my hair thinning for a minute or just falling out as a guy, but if you're a guy, you look at your dad, you look at your grandfather, you look at your uncles, you're like, ugh, uh, maybe I should think about that. And so then it's how do I keep it? Then you have people who are starting to see some fall out, and they're going, oh my God, this is actually happening, what the heck is going on? And you have people who already have thin hair or you know hair that isn't healthy, uh, or are mostly bald saying, can I grow it back? And these are like three different use cases. So I want to go through those with you guys today. Sound like a plan? Sounds, Sounds great. great. Okay. And if Nutrafol sounds familiar to you, uh, it's probably because I've had them on more than, I think, 100 episodes ago on episode 420, uh, believe it or not. I should have had a CBD one for that. Awesome. <laughs> and <laughs> Happy episode, to take that spot. <laughs> and episode 535. Uh, where we talk uh, more about hair and some other things like that. But this is an ongoing area of interest. I hear feedback from Bulletproof Radio listeners. And now that I'm really focused on anti-aging with my Superhuman book, I just thought it was time to have you guys back on for another episode to talk about the stuff we didn't get to cover last time. So you've now moved into what you're calling uh, with Nutrafol hair wellness. What exactly does that mean, especially if you're looking at it from the perspective of each of those three different buckets of people, either it's not gonna happen to me, but I don't really want it to. The it's happening to me right now, OMG, and it already happened to me, how do I get back? So hair wellness, what's the deal? It's a great question. Um, so it's just like you said, it's three buckets of people. And um, actually you missed one, I think. There's, there's another bucket? Yes, there's Children? another bucket. No. <laughs> The, the one you missed might have been, I want better, healthier hair. Oh, so your hair is already healthy, but you want it to be like even yeah. more healthy? So like what if you're not, okay. yeah, what if you're not afraid of what's coming, but what if you're just, I want to have better, better looking hair? And uh, yes, there are so many people suffer, suffering from a hair loss and thinning, and um, there's just as many worried about it. Um, and just as many wanting to to do something about it, but there are also a lot. You know, it's also a wide range of. Uh, if you wanted to uh, sort of go across all of these buckets, you wouldn't just call it hair loss and thinning. So hair wellness is uh, something in between the medications that we have available, which are uh, FDA approved drugs like Propecia and Rogaine, and the simple vitamins and minerals like and also castor oil or whatever other stuff that people could be using it is really about utilizing clinically proven and efficacious uh, nutraceuticals basically botanicals that have clinical efficacy to rebalance the pathways from within so like you said there are more than one bucket here of people if we were just talking about hair loss and thinning it would be hair loss and thinning. Hair wellness is about encompassing all of these and really looking about prevention as well as restoration. So I heard a lot of marketing stuff and it's not very medical in there. So I'm just gonna go a little deeper, okay. So topical interventions, it sounds very fancy. Let's start with the people who have, well, my hair is pretty good, but I wanna make it better. So, I mean, are they going to, I know eating more collagen helps uh, for sure, like that's one of the things, but are they gonna take just a supplement? Are they gonna switch their shampoo? Are they gonna start micro needling or using lasers? Like, like how do you know? There, there's, you could spend 10 grand on your hair and not even get started. I, I was completely blown away that anyone does that level of stuff, but like, 
give me like a stacked rank, All right? I'm a, I'm a healthy hair, but I want like goddess hair. What, <laughs> what do I do? I think it depends, uh, A, what kind of person you are. Uh, but then if you just are wanting to support hair, I feel like those people normally turn to the common things they consider good for your hair. So like those people are going to, they might use Pantene, <laughs> but it's probably going to make them yeah, everyone, bold. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people that understand that, you know, like parabens and sulfates are not good. So mm-hmm. people are using natural shampoos and conditioner. But that's a misnomer that, that that can actually help grow your hair. So it can definitely help like your texture and clean your hair, condition it. But it's not actually spending enough time on your head to actually do anything um, underneath the surface. Uh, also, those people are probably looking for biotin. They're taking collagen in their water and smoothies and coffee. Uh, they're just really supporting it on a very, not superficial level, but we'll call it a nutritional level. Okay. Uh, I think as hair loss or thinning progresses is when people start to turn to other treatments. So those people might be taking a drug and a supplement and topicals, and then they're going to pay $7,000 for PRP. They might get a hair transplant after that. So I feel like you start at the minimal and work your way up. You're a naturopath. Would you recommend the drugs? Uh, I do not recommend the drugs. Why not? Mostly because we've seen them uh, not have the most efficacious results. Uh, So, you know, I'm not going to say that Propecia doesn't work because it does. Uh, It just comes along with some unfortunate side effects uh, that are in the the sexual realm and aren't too enjoyable for your average person. Uh, And then as a girl, you know, using Rogaine and Minoxidil, you have to put something on your hands, you have to put it in your head, it makes your hair kind of greasy and sticky. Um, A lot of uh, side effects can be like irritation. So that's just not something that I think uh, I I would recommend to somebody else. Okay. So it doesn't really work. Okay, now let's get the medical side of things. All right, so we got our our naturopath perspective. All right, and you guys both work for Nutrafol, and you know you're both coordinating on this. So I'm expecting there to be some overlap, but I mean, are there are there times, Sophia, where you said, yeah, you know, pop some pop some drugs, your hair will like it. Well, I'm not a practicing MD. I mm-hmm. am fully. This is one. I'm I'm one of the co-founders of the company, so obviously. My opinion is a little bit skewed. Uh, I do not recommend the medications. Uh, and like Tess was saying, I think Rogaine could work. And, and I think when, when we did our clinical study, we actually asked that question, would you prefer to take a supplement or use a topical? And the study was in women. And most women said, I, would, I think over 80% said that they would prefer to take a supplement over using a topical because it messes with our hairstyle. And it leaves a residue. Okay. And I do very strongly believe in uh, interventions that are multi-targeted, that have an ability to target multiple pathways. And some of those are, of course, uh, PRP and, and the nutraceuticals. And PRP platelet-rich plasma does work. We often use it in conjunction with the supplement. Okay. And I've, I've talked about PRP a few times on the show, not just for hair, um, although I've had it done in my hair. Uh, I talked with, uh, let's see, it was Amy Killen from Docera Medical, who last time I was there, I did this um, this whole six hands, whole body stem cell treatment where they did like every joint all along my spine, my, my brain. And while I was unconscious for four hours, they also did PRP on my face and my hair. And you must feel I amazing. I don't even know wherever else they did PRP because I was unconscious. But I, I <laughs> they do it in every. Period. Oh, I had some. I had. I've been pretty open about the the male uh, the male what do they call it? enhancement shots. But uh, they did the that P as well. And the O shot. The P shot and the, the O shot. shot. <laughs> the O shot for me really hurt. They kept. No, I'm kidding. You can't do that. Uh, but it's. Uh, 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 my wife did have that done as well and it's powerful, but I, so I did have uh, PRP in m- my hair done, but, uh, it's pretty darn painful if you're not unconscious for it. Right. Which is, so it's expensive, uh, and it can be painful. I think that, you know, my business partner had it done and I had it done and he was screaming in pain and I was just like, what, I don't whatever you're like i could have a baby Come on, so, this is nothing. exactly so i think there's <laughs> definitely a slight difference between how we perceive pain in men and women and they do say that women um have a higher pain tolerance than men surprisingly it, yeah i think especially for for hair um i've had a couple different practitioners mention that amy mentioned the same thing like injections on the face and, and in hair women are just tougher than guys are apparently and also a lot of our doctors uh, use uh, distraction mechanisms so they'll use actually vibrant 
a vibrator. <laughs> to that would distract me. <laughs> <laughs> in, on the scalp. Uh, oh, to, oh to, that's to, what yeah, I was yeah. Yeah. Um, on the scalp uh, to distract from the pain sensor. So that helps a lot for a lot of people. And also, uh, sometimes they utilize uh, even nitric oxide to. Oh, just like to breathe the gas and get a little bit high. That's what that's my my business partner had. Whip it. They, they use whippets. <laughs> yes, <is what> he, <laughs> he was great. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that'll sell a lot of PRP. All right, I I got you. Um, now it's interesting. Nitrous oxide um, can get you a little bit high, but if you have certain types of genetic things, it can also make you feel like crap for days because it affects your nitric oxide synthase system. Uh, I'm one of those people. So for me, uh, sorry, whippets are not my drug of choice. That would be coffee. That's my drug of choice. Understandable. <laughs> uh, but for other people, it's profound. You go to the dentist, you're like, I was just kind of loopy, and then everything was done, or you, you get whatever done to your hair. Okay. So I'm hearing a little bit from both of you. Obviously, okay, you work for Nutrafol, and you have a, a combination formula that works on multiple reasons. People uh, have hair that's unhealthy, or people are losing their hair, et cetera. Um, and it's well formulated. Obviously, you guys wouldn't be on. But what... Uh, what I'm hearing though is that from both of you, there's a path that goes where you start with getting hair healthier and that's nutrient based. And that would obviously involve Nutrafol or you guys wouldn't bother making it. Uh, and then there's a path that progresses up from there. What are the pathways that you're going after um, with Nutrafol? I heard earlier, like don't use bad stuff on your hair. That's not though in a capsule. So if we are using natural shampoos made from you know unicorn juice and whatever else, um, what, what are the pathways that, that you need to hit? Well, so originally we formulated, uh, a men's formula and a women's formula, and both of them are targeting inflammation, oxidative stress, uh, stress, because stress is a big impact on hair loss, uh, and hair health, um, as well as the hormonal pathways such as DHD. And, uh, of course, anything that is coming at us from the environment. Uh, we published uh, some papers of, with very prominent dermatologists talking about the fact that hair loss is not due to one thing or another, and genetics are not the only thing. I always say genetics load the gun, environment pulls the trigger. And that's why the formulation works so well, because everything else out there targets one pathway only. However, today we've evolved. Since we last spoke, we actually, Tess and I wrote a uh, 50 page white paper looking deep into the research of how fun functional medicine <coughs> applies to hair loss. And it's fascinating as we were doing the research, and this is really where hair wellness comes in from the scientific and medical support is that uh, the follicle is actually not separated, it's not separate from the rest of the body. Just like every other disorder in the body is really a combination of different systems being affected in the same way the follicle or any dysfunction in the follicle can is a result ultimately of other systems being impacted as well in the body. And that's where uh, we created a, a new uh, and evolved version of Nutrafol and the way that we apply Nutrafol for, uh, for our customers and to our patients is a personalized and systems wide approach. What does personalized mean when we're talking about taking vitamins? Well, internally, we do research and we also test people. So one of the things that we had started doing earlier on is we started doing a hair mineral analysis test on customers that weren't responding fully to the core formulations. And what we found were some very interesting trends that perhaps are not very surprising is that some of them most uh, uh, some of the pathways that were most impacted were the detoxification pathways, the stress pathways, and the gut. The gut, Thank <laughs> my <you>. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so, the gut. So, so our hair loss is detox systems, stress systems, and gut. Oh my God, did we just say that hair loss has to do with biohacking? Because those are like the main <laughs> things that you go after. Yes. Now, does this mean that you're saying people with unhealthy looking hair might be unhealthy? <laughs> yes, in fact, we are. Oh my God, <laughs> who would have thought? I think that the med medicine as it stands today, we look towards normal ranges as a, as a, as a standard. 
uh, when somebody comes in, unless they're sick, they're basically healthy. And that's not true. There's a period of time before a disorder or dysfunction happens where there was suboptimal functioning. And that's where biohacking comes in and Eastern medicine comes in and naturopathic medicine comes in and functional medicine comes in, where we understand that normal, if, if you're one, um, if you're within the normal range and you're one off, you're still considered normal, but that's not true. Um, you could have a normal thyroid test, but that's not true either. And thyroid hormones are very important for hair growth. So what we're basically doing is we're supporting the systems that are having suboptimal functioning. And when they have suboptimal functioning, that results in hair loss and thinning as some of the first signs along with fatigue or any other symptoms that can come along. And when we say personalized, it's because not everyone is going to have poor gut problems. Not everyone is going to have poor detoxification problems. So all of our new targeted booster products were curated. So if someone had a little bit of stress issue and some gut problems, they could take um, formulas that would address those things. Then if you looked at your best friend, that person might need some liver support and B vitamins. Um, it just goes back to the, to the point that no two people are actually the same, even if they're presenting with the same condition. So how would I know if I'm like a liver guy or am I like a stress guy or? You'd uh, probably be a nothing guy because you probably, <laughs> you, you're you already taking all of the. <laughs> I, I, I'm working on it. I mean, I, I take all the stuff you guys send me uh, and I, I mean, I take 150 pills a day, right? Uh, but I will tell you that my forehead's a little higher than it used to be, right? But I'm almost 50. And all the guys in my family were bald by their like mid twenties, so I've way exceeded the expectation here. Um, but um, I definitely pay attention to it, and I haven't done anything like crazy unnatural. I don't take the any medications for stuff like that. Um, so I, I'm always going through this. I also know many years of thyroid dysfunction uh, played a substantial role in uh, in my hair. I finally got on thyroid, but it wasn't until um, probably my late twenties uh, when I did that, and I'd already started seeing, feeling differences. And since then, there's been times when I'm like, oh, I'll go off thyroid because I just took whatever SARMs and then I'm overheating for my thyroid. I actually need to, to reduce it, but I reduced it too far. And then I'm like, wait, what just happened to my hair? I'm like, oh, crap. So you get back on thyroid, but you, know, you lose a little bit when you're a biohacker. Can I grow that stuff back? Like, is my forehead going to get lower? There is some damage that happens to follicles over time. And at first they get thinner and thinner and thinner, and then there's scar tissue that forms. So there's some follicles that are not able to come back, unfortunately, if they've been significantly damaged. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, there are also sleepy follicles that have been dormant. And uh, when they are available underneath the skin, then you can stimulate that by proper balancing of, the, uh, of all of these pathways. So that doesn't answer the liver versus uh, stress versus <laughs> whatever guy I am. But it was a nice dog. I mean. <laughs> well, to find out what you are affected by in your lifestyle, we need to ask you some lifestyle questions. So All right, ask away. For our listeners today, we actually have uh, developed a lifestyle questionnaire on our website, uh, which will actually ask you questions about your energy, about your sleep. It'll ask you about your digestion. It will ask you about um, if you are have are eating too much fish with mercury in it uh, to really kind of see what systems may be overcompromised for you specifically. So it takes about five, or five to seven minutes. I'm <laughs> okay. going to take this. It's go to Nutrafol.com. Nutrafol, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com. And then there should be a nice button that says get started. So is it going to be long and boring? It's actually not boring, but it is a little bit long. It takes five, like I said, five to seven minutes. So ask me a couple of these questions that are on there. Okay. So you want to ask them? Remember them off the top of your head? Are you a man or a woman? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, okay. I'm pretty sure I've got that yeah. one. Today I'm identifying as a man. But so some of the questions might be related to, for instance, what energy patterns do you have to elicit w whether or not you have a cortisol dysfunction? We all know that cortisol is supposed to be highest in the morning so that you can wake up and, and be ready for the day and lowest at night. A lot of people who are in adrenal dysfunction or have imbalanced cortisol levels will ultimately have low energy in the morning and will have, be wired and tired at night. 
Um, we'll okay. ask about fish consumption too, and what what deodorant you use, for instance, because aluminum toxicity. We find a lot of connection between the environment and your hair. Uh, and since our liver is responsible for helping metabolize all of these elements from our body, so this way they don't damage us and our hair, um, that's why we're really asking those questions. So Okay, so like, what do you eat? How old are you? Um, I only got to the, the how old are you and are you a man or woman? And also age matters, especially for women. We recently came out with a... Um, a product that targets perimenopausal, menopausal, and postmenopausal women. So there's a slight difference in hormonal shifts that happens later. Oh, it's a huge difference. Yeah. The, okay. the science behind it is actually pretty interesting. How come uh, these women are starting to notice similar patterns as to um, male pattern hair loss around that age? Uh, and it's because when menopause happens, your estrogen and progesterone uh, really decrease at a rapid rate. And their testosterone isn't necessarily high, but it's just decreasing at a slower pace. So we like to call that relative testosterone dominance. Uh, and then you, at that time, you actually have less sex hormone binding globulin. So you have more free androgens, which are likely to turn into DHT uh, and then will affect a woman in those specific patterns. This is why women in perimenopause get so buff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not. <laughs> I think the diet, the dietary questions are really important. Most of us are not eating... Um, a, a great diet, uh, and some of us that are eating an amazing diet. Uh, usually, I would I would like to say that I'm pretty good. I'm still impacted here in the United States versus when I go abroad because of uh, glyphosate and because of all the other toxins and and antibiotics. And it's yeah. even if you're eating organic, it's usually still going to be not fully organic, and so the microbiome is significantly impacted. And some of the most interesting things that we've uh, witnessed recently is that hair connection to the gut, and uh, the hair connection to the gut um, is is through the uh, permeability of the of the uh, the digestive tract also to the from the inflammation uh, the systemic inflammation that occurs that actually ultimately impacts the hair follicle um, there are some interesting studies that came out recently two case reports of uh, two alopecia universalis patients that were refractory to treatment so alopecia universalis is when um, it's one of those autoimmune uh, hair loss pathologies. Oh, like your whole yeah, body, your whole like body loses like... hair. And interestingly enough, they were refractory to normal treatment, like steroids and all of these other things. And um, they also happened to have uh, uh, Clostridia difficile infections. And so they were given FMTs, fecal matter transplants, and lo and behold, they grew hair back. Whoa, so... Yeah, super interesting. And I think that just is case in point that the gut has a large part to do with your immune system and immune regulation in your body uh, because it's, it's you know, while it's crappy, they had to have a um, C. diff infection. Did you say it was crappy FMT? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That was funny. Pun intended. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's unfortunate that they had to have um, a C. diff infection to be able to receive an MF FMT. Just in the then US. they got you can, this huge you can go side overseas. benefit. overseas. Can you yeah, go? If you go on overseas, you can definitely. Ma take magically, it. there's medical freedom in some countries. Just say if you could just go to the pharmacy, be like, I'll just have a. Uh, and little they probably FMT don't capsule. even need it that much. I was. <laughs> their I was their just, food is healthier. I was just thinking, like, you guys have good hair. Can I just have some poop? Okay, never mind. I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> but, I want a young organic <laughs> farmer. I wouldn't want to be like any my microbiome away. <laughs> but you're, you're, I'll sell it. But but in all seriousness, do you see a future? That's what I was trying to go with that, even though it was gross. Um, is. Uh, you see a future where actually we might do specific, not necessarily fecal matter transplants, but the bacteria from those, and you can already buy those for people who are really sick, but there'll be ones, oh, we know these bacteria make you grow hair like crazy? Absolutely. Yeah. So we okay. know one of those strains already is called Lactobacillus ruteri. Uh, ruteri, the, oh, you can buy that as a probiotic, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. you can. It actually has really wonderful benefits for um, upper GI issues, the brand BioGaia. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Or Nutrafol. 
Or <laughs> Are you guys put it in Nutrafol? Yes. We did. Oh, that, that's a new addition though, right? Mm-hmm. It's not in our core formulas. It's in our hair biotic. In um, hair biotic. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. But this one particular strain actually has preliminary studies. They're done in mice uh, where they have um, actually shaved off part of their hair. So the mice are still living and being treated wonderfully. <laughs> um, and they take this L. Rotera and um, actually grow more thick and lustrous fur. They also dove in a little bit deeper to see why that was happening. Um, and they noticed it's because of a modulation between IL-10 and IL-17. Which are inflammatory cytokines for people who are not as biohackery as the three of us. <laughs> uh, so basically when you get inflammation, there's different pathways and these are signaling molecules for inflammation. Right. So that's intriguing. Do you know what that stuff eats? Does it like fat? Does it like protein? Or does it like carbs? That is a great question. I'm going to say it likes fat, but I'm really just using my educational knowledge off of that. I'm guessing if it's uh, lactobacillus, it's probably going to be more of like a fiber or a carb. Okay. Most of that species that I'm aware of don't eat fat, although they tolerate it. Um, The reason I'm asking is that most probiotics, like you can take them, they work and then they go away. Right. But if you take a prebiotic with it, you get an explosive thing. So like, like where it just grows like crazy. I would love so, to talk so about we, our prebiotic. Oh, you guys have a prebiotic? Well, yeah. we have a bulletproof one too. So tell me about your prebiotic. So we use a non-conventional prebiotic. It's actually a bacteriophage, which sounds like a scary word, but um, it is a really innovative um, proprietary blend of different viruses that you actually take. And it goes in there and basically targets all of the bad bacteria Think of as like and a little. Is that a prebiotic? It is considered a prebiotic That's because pretty. of the results that the, that you get. So That's it goes hardcore. in like a little sniper. It kind of blasts the back, back bad bacteria, and then the good bacteria eat those cellular components. And um, it's been clinically shown to grow. Okay, I am so going to get some of that stuff. So bacteriophages are an area of interest for me. For people listening, the only time you've ever heard me talk about those is probably with Naveen Jain from Biome because uh, their test. Uh, and I think if you use code Dave, they give you a deal, by the way. But um, Viome is the only one that can actually measure what phages you have. And these phages are basically viruses that feed off of certain bacteria. And they only target bacteria. I know viruses sound scary. Um, but I think for any, um, for any probiotic, prebiotic combination, there's this concept of uh, weed, feed, seed, and feed. Uh, and the idea is you might you want all of those three components in there. So for us, when we developed the hair biotic, we wanted the bacteriophage to weed the bad bacteria. And then to seed, we also have a bacillus subtilis, which is uh, acid resistance. It's spore mm-hmm. forming. Is this in hair biotic? They're yes, all in there. All of this is in okay, hair biotic. Okay, so this is in hair biotic. It has the good stuff. Okay, the phages are really unusual in a, in a probiotic formula, and I'm super interested. Most of the phage research, by the way, was done in Russia. You guys may know this. Uh, and then the Russians, uh, when the economy went down, like hundreds of millions of dollars of research is just in some guy's freezer at home. <laughs> and uh, this has largely been ignored in the West, but it's now resurging. So I'm super stoked that you have that. Yeah, and, let's go find that freezer. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, there are people who are out doing that sort of stuff. It's, it's fascinating. Um, what I'm... Uh, I'm actually going to totally take that stuff. That's I'm really interested to try it. And I'm doing, I wrote about this in Superhuman too, um, the Bulletproof Inner Fuel, which sounds like it'd be very compatible. There are no phages in that and there are no probiotics at all. It's just the growth medium to cause lactobacillus and the other good strains to grow. So when you take something like a hair biotic, it can grow and proliferate and just have a substrate to grow on. Uh, and to get enough uh, digestive fiber in your diet. Because a lot of people, when they're going on keto, especially the dirty keto, like, guys, you should read the thing about more vegetables than anything else. But a lot of people, they, they go down the pork rinds and... Eggs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pork rinds, <laughs> eggs, and uh, diet soda, a keto root, and mm-hmm. uh, bad things happen, as you guys know. In fact, I don't think they could feed that special species that you've discovered because what they're eating, there's no food for that lactobacillus strain in there. Exactly. And I think that's why keto has gotten so much heat on that. It's bad for the microbiome, but it's really based off the dirty keto practices. Yeah. When you eat enough veggies, it's good. And the problem I was having is that when I travel, you can go to a restaurant and say, I'd like a plate of just steamed vegetables. And they bring you two pieces of asparagus. And like, oh no, I'm sorry, I wanted a whole plate of it. Here's a thousand dollars. And they bring you four pieces of asparagus. Like, you cannot get vegetables. It doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. So, 
I'm traveling 150 days of the year. So half the time my diet is not enough fiber from vegetables because when I'm at home, I get it. That's why I made inner fuel. But stacking it with phages and with uh, the specific species you found that grows hair growth is something I'm actually really excited to give that a try. So I, I want to look like like a werewolf next time I see you. <laughs> Lovely. You'll be our test subject then. Right, right. <laughs> that, that sounds cool. All right. Uh, that's fascinating. I did not realize you guys had gotten into phages. Uh, I also didn't realize you could call phages uh, a prebiotic, but I like it. Yeah. What's the difference between like short-term stress, like the sort of thing where, you know, okay, I, I got in a car accident or, you know, I got an infection or I had a bad breakup versus just the longer term stress. Uh, what does that do to your hair? I will answer that question. Okay. I love this question because from an MD standpoint, most doctors believe that there's only one type of stress-related hair loss, and that's called telogen effluvium. It basically means that our follicle is suddenly, very suddenly, pushed into the resting phase, which is the telogen phase. And it can only stay there for three to six months, so inevitably, after a stressful event, all the hair that's suddenly shifted into that phase will fall out. And that's what your average doctor will, te will test for. They'll do a pull test and they'll see how many hairs come out. Now, what we are understanding now from research is that it's not, we're not encountering life-threatening events very frequently today. What we are really truly encountering is this chronic level of stimulation. Like Facebook. Like, exactly. I, Facebook makes you bald. I want to say contributes. that, actually. It's a part of it's your It's a part of your quote. Instagram, Facebook, dating apps, uh, WhatsApp, iMessenger. It's that whole emails. What else is there? Now I have Slack. <laughs> hey, you're not caught up on your Bulletproof Radio episodes. There's so much pressure to listen. Exactly. <laughs> so we'd never disconnect from our phone. I want to say, I think back in the day, Hans Seeley, who actually coined the term stress, basically said that, I think in the 60s or 70s, he basically said, oh, we don't have enough um, anabolic time. They did not have enough time to disconnect. Now think about what that means today. If they did not have enough time to disconnect, then what does that mean for us? So there is this chronic level of underlying stimulation of the hypothalamic pituitary axis and of course the, the autonomic nervous system. And the adrenals are constantly working and th that disrupts our normal cortisol patterns. And the follicles actually have receptors for cortisol and for corticotropin releasing hormone. When they're stimulated, interestingly enough, they can actually produce their own hormones. So they act as almost antennas for stress on the skin. So with that in mind, we can't say that it's a sudden stressful event that will impact them. It's actually every little bit of accumulated stress that might not look like stress. So I often ask people, are you stressed? And they're like, no. And at the same time, they will say, uh, oh, yeah, you know, I don't really get a chance to eat in the morning or in the afternoon. That was a recent question I asked for some um, residents, medical residents. Wow. And I'm like, how do you just say that you're not stressed? <laughs> yeah. um, so that's why we ask the questions on our quiz in a very sort of roundabout way. We want to make sure that we're not asking directly, are you stressed? But we're asking about energy levels. We're asking about sleep patterns and things like that. And, and we do ask if you've had a big event, because sometimes that's just like the event that tips the glass over. Like you can have all this cumulative stress adding up, adding up, and you haven't reached this threshold yet. And then you have a breakup, you get surgery or you have a big move and then your just adrenal system collapses. And like you just get handfuls of hair coming out. And then, yeah, then you're going to have those handfuls of I hair. I think everyone's <clears throat> noticed that. You're like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, because yeah. sometimes it's hard for people to identify one thing or they'll be like, I had this um, traumatic uh, event happen to me over two years ago. Like I should have my hair back by now. And we notice people do not. And that's because even after that, there's no rehabilitation time. Your body can't fully recover because you're still exposed to these low level chronic stressors on a daily basis. And that's very common for post-pregnancy, actually. A yeah. lot of women. Um, so even though. Well, pregnancy is in itself beautiful and wonderful, but it can be very stressful in the beginning once the baby is born. Um, and the body actually during pregnancy, it uh, it tells the hair follicles to stop cycling. 
So all the mechanisms that were happening normally in your normal life, the body's very smart. It just says, that's not important right now. Can we stop? We'll focus the in all of the attention on the baby and the pregnancy. And so during that time, the hair looks beautiful and luscious and wonderful. And when the baby is born, um, inevitably within three to six months, um, a lot of those hairs will fall out. Mm-hmm. Now, normally speaking, we used to tell patients, I be, back in residency, I remember this, don't worry about it, it'll come back. Now, what I hear a lot now is that those women actually never recover fully. Yeah. And what's behind that? Well, also that baby is very stressful to have in the beginning. Um, and lack of sleep. Yeah, there are nutritional depletion, you know, nutritional differences when during pregnancy and post pregnancy, and that accumulates. So there hasn't been a chance for the woman to regain uh, her normal way of being. And that's why two to three years after, they're still feeling that the hair hasn't come back fully. Um, so that's chronic stress for you. And that's really what's important to address, not just those sudden stressful events. So having babies causes baldness in men and bad hair. <laughs> that, that's what I got out of all that, right? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And, I like you said, it is very multimodal. I can <laughs> tell you, it's a little stressful to have babies because they keep waking you up. And then sleep is disturbed. Yeah. It is stressful for a man also to have a baby because you're yeah. dealing with maybe a hormonal lady (laughs) and then also waking up um and having to feed the baby you're having to deal with with stress like no more sex for like six years (laughs) and and we have to study those effects yeah that's we haven't it's probably good for maybe that's the next uh, i'm sure it's great i'm sure i look into it in the meantime (laughs) and that's a really good point so one of our boosters is actually the stress adaptogen and the um yeah we actually have two boosters for the stress response system one of them is the actually a b complex Mm -hmm. because uh b vitamins get depleted during stress one of the only things that happens is that we actually deplete all of our nutrients and most importantly b vitamins and some of them have been studied and shown in mice when we replete them that the adrenal gets uh, adrenal glands uh become healthier and you can actually prevent them from getting worse yeah. if you take b vitamins in early stage stress and yeah, yeah i think it's a good idea for most people to be on those yeah. exactly the yeah. and the stress adaptogen we have a stress adaptogen in the core formulation it's the ashwagandha it's standardized to very high percentage of the bioactives and has actually been shown in clinical studies to uh reduce cortisol levels in chronically stressed adults and then <coughs> the boosters have um many other adaptogens in them and that's for people who sp- who have that, who have really almost at a point of adrenal fatigue or have been um, impacted by chronic stress. Probably Probably everybody. (laughs) Reishi mushroom, rhodiola, and shisandra. Beautiful. Surprisingly, shisandra has some um, research that actually tie it to hair health as well. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) All right, let's talk about stuff that's bad for our hair that we do uh, that is just purely environmental. Like... Not enough sunshine, too much sunshine, bad air, air pollution, I don't know, uh, standing in garbage rain. I don't, tell, tell me what's bad that people are doing. They're using products that are not healthy for them. I think one of the biggest issues that we find is uh, xenobiotics, um, including BPA uh, and uh as, 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 dr- as Tess is drinking from her <laughs> plastic water bottle, uh, we don't often do that. That's one of the questions that we actually do ask from our customers is how often they use plastic or anything that is contained in plastic. Parabens, sulfates, all of these phthalates, they do uh, damage us. And one of the biggest things about the hair follicle is it is one of the most sensitive Uh, hormonal tissues. So it's incredibly sensitive to a good endocrine balance. And anything that disrupts that endocrine balance is a big issue for the follicle. And it's a finely tuned mechanism through multiple growth factors and cytokines and hormones. It has receptors for absolutely every hormone. If you do throw out even one thing, the rest of the biological clock suffers. And so I think in terms of air pollution and in terms of the topical things that we put on our hair and our scalp or even on our skin because that travels and anything that we ingest as well. 
such as the BPAs and from the plastic, can throw off that balance. Sophia is making a great point for how the environment can um, throw off our endocrine system. But then you have like the direct toxins that actually come in and can um, hurt your mitochondria. They um, cause higher reactive oxygen species, uh, which in a fancy world is for oxidative stress, um, which can long eventually damage the follicle and impact the growth cycle. So give me some specifics here. What should I not do if I want to have a head full of lustrous well, hair? First, don't eat a lot of sushi. What? Not, it's not just lunch. sushi. Because what are you about mercury? Mercury. Um, unless you're really using a great um, liver support, something that helps you det detoxify well. Um, otherwise, all of that mercury will accumulate. And, you know, aluminum, for instance, in our um deodorants i think we spoke about that last time i use a crystal deodorant <laughs> salt doesn't it say like aluminum on there right on the crystal no sure absolutely 100 percent sure i tested negative i was one of the few people in our office who had no aluminum who had no aluminum in my hair that's cool the rest of the people who were not using a crystal and were not hippies like me we're actually <laughs> me specifically. <laughs> Hold on a second. Our MD was was cleaner than our naturopath. Oh my goodness! Yes, yes. You guys are defying stereotypes. <laughs> Everyone always says that about us. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so again, so not utilizing um, any aluminum. Uh, so keeping uh, the metals products. out is a big deal. Keeping the metals out, uh, I think e-cigarettes as well, or cigarette Things smoke. Like trash your hair, yeah. Exactly. So cadmium uh, was found in hair. But just nicotine itself in high doses is bad for hair follicles. Yeah. Fun fact about cadmium: they found in premenopausal women, uh, most of the cadmium sources were actually coming from soy products. Um, so you know, we have a lot of vegetarians and vegans who are eating soy, and it can be a um, a Can we translate of that exposure. eating garbage? Can we just be really <laughs> oh, straightforward about okay. that? <laughs> it has so that. many issues because not only is it soy product with a cadmium, but also thyroid, thyroid hormones. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a huge interference yeah. for normal uh, and glyphosate and the pseudoestrogens and all the other and, and lectins and all the other reasons that it's not food for humans or animals. And now to both of yours point, we kind of just covered five different things that are influencing five different systems in our body that we've actually found tied to hair. So you're um, using products that are disrupting your detoxification system. You're eating food that is disrupting your gut. Um, you're eating soy. Now you have thyroid problems. So all of these things are compounding in your body at one time, um, ultimately with the end result of um, you know, inhibiting the hair follicle. So I'm going to fix all this with some Nutrafol capsules, right? Well, <laughs> the way that uh, we've evolved as a company is that normally speaking, you would take the Nutrafol capsules to really target the pathways at the follicle. And then once you identify which system is impacted um, for you, and it's not just really based on what your environmental inputs are also, um, it's the cumulative effect. Uh, not everyone is going to have the same system impacted because it's the accumulation of all the different stressors that makes an impact. And genetics and biochemical individuality do play a role. So for you, it might be the detoxification system and the stress response. For me, it might be the you know, sugar support or sugar or metabol metabolic system that is impacted. So it's different. Um, so once we identify which of the supporting boosters you would need, that's that's the personalization aspect of okay. the of the uh, intervention. So if the average person who has average or below average hair uh, decides that they're going to all right eat less of the bad stuff, uh, they're going to uh, I'm going to assume eat some of the bulletproof collagen because it just makes hair easier to grow. Support that and. <laughs> Uh, they're going to add Nutrafol in. How long would it take before they would say, oh, look, I can see a difference in my hair? That's a great question. Sophie loves to answer it, but because I think people like to jump the gun. They take a product for a month and they don't notice anything is happening. But the hair cycle actually takes very long to go through its whole process. How long is very long? It, it actually takes years. but we About six years, three to six years in the antigen phase and then the catagen phase, which is the... So antigen is the growth phase for anyone listening and catagen is the regression phase. 
and that's about three weeks. And then a follicle goes into the resting phase, which is uh, telogen. Um, you can think of it as um, having a cup of tea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so the follicle is essentially resting and the hair has already detached. So it's just waiting for it to fall out. How long does it wait before it falls out? About three to six months. So you can have like a dead hair for six months that hasn't fallen out? Yeah. Oh, that's and cool. that's when the regeneration process starts and when the stem cells gets activate, get activated for the new follow, for the new hair to grow. However, again, there's a, when you don't have all of the pathways balanced, that hair might just decide to stay um, in the in-between phase and, and, and kind of sleepy. We call it the ketogen phase, but that's not often used in common language. Okay. So it's going to take me six years after I start. No, no, no. <laughs> in our clinical study, it actually showed that um, people saw results in three to six months progressively. So as okay. time goes on, they were seeing better results. In general, I, everyone is different. You're, most people will say, I'm going to you know, try a new supplement for a month. And by the way, most supplements unless they're direct mitochondrial things, and I make a few ones like that, you feel those in five minutes. But most of them, if you're gonna take your vitamin D, like you probably aren't gonna have like angels singing from heaven <laughs> from your vitamin D, but if you take it for three months, like, oh, what well, do you know, I didn't get sick the way I used to. And, and you see these changes. Right. So it's not an unreasonable amount of time, but it's longer than the short attention span that most well, of us naturally have. And Nutrivol comes along with a lot of side benefits, uh, like some of the ingredients have been, like ashwagandha for instance, uh, actually helps reduce anxiety, it helps uh, promote stress resiliency, you might sleep better, and these have been proven to happen before the three month mark. So I think people, a lot of our customers, they say, you know, Nutrivol is making me feel great, I don't notice my hair is um, growing yet, but I'm still gonna take it and it, because I feel so great on it. That's the systemic effects, okay. Right. That mm -hmm. makes good sense. All right, so we talked about bad stuff you can do, how long it's gonna to take to get your hair to grow better, I'll say. Um, what if you're just like full on bald and you're a guy, are you screwed? I wouldn't say you're screwed because there's plenty of really beautiful bald men, but- <laughs> I mean, if you're bald and you wanna grow hair. Um, yeah, it's probably unlikely, I would say. It depends on how bald you are. And and it's interesting to me, sometimes I meet men who actually shave their hair and and they are bald and um and I would I don't offer them neutrophil. I have friends like that and all of a sudden they come to me and they say, Hey, so what about that supplement? Can I take it? And I'm like, What? Um and the reason is they actually wanna have those little black dots on their scalp still maintained it's not like they're looking to grow their hair but they actually still want to prevent the loss of it so i think in those circumstances you can still take it if you're really set on having a uh, retaining hair which you you have to do something because it is progressive mm -hmm. um but you would not grow the the scarred follicles back it's just impossible because there's right. not much you can do with that unless you're having a transplant I will use the the true light, like red and infrared light stuff. And just full disclosure, uh, I'm a founder of true light and helped to actually some of the patents they have on the glasses I, I wrote. Um, so, uh, but I've been using that like on my head and noticing a difference. Would you stack red light therapy uh, with Nutrafol? Is that a good plan? So, yes. Low level laser light therapy has been actually shown to... Uh, stimulate mitochondria and the follicles around the follicles and um, stimulate growth. So a lot of our doctors who have Nutrafol in their offices, they are utilizing it together um, with the helmets as well. So okay. it does work. I think, I think that if you stimulate the mitochondria and lower the inflammation and provide the botanicals that are countering all of these other pathways, it's a really great combination therapy. And even in addition to that, Nutrafol does contain um, vitamins and nutrients that help support hair growth um, nutrition. So you have more mitochondria, you have more cellular energy to be using all these great things coming through the bloodstream to actually help generate the hair that you see. Should I also use a derma roller on top of that? It wouldn't hurt. Yeah, it wouldn't um, hurt. There are some studies that basically show that uh, healing or the process of, um, you know, that creating a micro... Um, incision uh, does generate some level of good inflammation, right? And mm -hmm. it stimulates growth and stimulates uh, stem cells as well. So they do help 
sometimes the derma rollers that are at home are not deep enough. So a lot of the our doctors, they also uh, use microneedling, which goes a little deeper. And just a quick disclaimer on the derma rollers. Uh, I think they're starting to crack down on how deep they can actually go uh, because, you know, doing a medical procedure in the safety of your home isn't always that safe. You know, if you're not um, cleaning your head, if you're not cleaning the tool. It's terrible doctor's license. Yeah. Or oh, <laughs> you, might, you might end up seeing more people. Oh, my God. I did a derma roller and my hair was dirty and I got an infection. That was my own damn fault. Yeah. Yeah. So let's definitely not let people do that. Sorry. Yeah. So, a little so bit of a shout out there for, you know, self-responsibility. But you're right. Okay. If you're going to take like one inch needles and roll over your head. Yeah. Don't right. do that. Yeah. yeah don't that's, do that. Okay. Got it. Mm-hmm. How, how deep do you think it's safe for just mere mortals to go who don't have white lab coats? I don't even know. Maybe like one one millimeter. I think one point five is actually significant enough to, um, you know, cause a, a micro trauma. Yeah, you'll start uh, bleeding around one point five or two. Yeah, if you're drawing blood in your house, it's it's probably not the best thing to do. You should see your dermatologist, see Oops. one of your esthetician to do some <laughs> micro needling there. <laughs> probably depends on where you're doing it too. If you're doing it in like the middle of your scalp, it's a different animal. If you're doing it like on your forehead, and you're going to look like someone broto tilled you, that's the problem. Ow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm just speaking for a friend. Uh. <laughs> I would say if you really want a real microneedling treatment, yeah, go to doctor. go to your board certified dermatologist. And are you a board certified dermatologist? No, I'm not. Oh, you're not board certified. Okay, I, I left my residency. <laughs> okay, to, to do but, this. <laughs> the, the other thing is, doctors have the electric little vibrating microneedling stuff that works really better than the rollers anyway. So yeah, that's what they did on my head when I was unconscious. At least that's what they told me. I believe them. Uh, so. Okay, so if you were to just go all in on like, okay, and there's a lot of people listening to the show, I mean, a lot of people who are exactly this, well, why would I do just one thing? I wanted a result, and I'm less worried about knowing exactly which one thing. So you would start out by saying, don't eat crap, okay? I might plug the Bulletproof Diet there that's got the you know kryptonite foods at the bottom, avoid those. And then I'd say, all right, toss some collagen in there because that's really easy, and you're probably already doing it if you listen to the show, like Bulletproof made collagen cool. And then you'd add Nutrafol. Right, and you'd figure out whether you need the core product for men or women. And I'm intrigued. I can't say that I've tried it yet, but this new um, prebiotic, probiotic, hairbiotic. Hairbiotic. Okay, want. I would toss that in there. Right, I'd add some bulletproof inner fuel because you want any probiotic you take to like have areas to grow, and it's good for gut health anyway. Uh, and then from there, you would do first light therapy, then microneedling. I would likely. Well, first, I want to say that we don't just have the hair biotic. We also have the liver support. Uh, we also have okay. other products. So there's about... So uh, you'd want to fill out the survey and figure out what you need. We have okay. seven seven targeted boosters. You'd want to fill out the survey and understand if you need the particular booster. Because you also might not need boosters. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we don't want to push a product on you. So by taking the survey, you'll understand what it is that your body needs are. Okay. And based on that, you might wind up with Nutrafol Core and two boosters, for instance. And then with all of these other components, which I fully think are amazing, um, from Bulletproof as well. And when you decide what procedure you want to, to, to do, I think it's really good to go to a doctor who actually knows you know knows all of these things who is actually utilizing multiple therapies like a, a person who has a good hair restoration component to their practice and they can really identify what it is that you might uh, need or, or desire at this point and not everybody needs everything that's the thing I don't think that any I think we all jump the gun by saying I want to do everything right now and it's not necessary no it's not necessary but right. there's a counterpoint to that there's well because there are those people who there are, like, are those people every one of the problems. and if they are those people then I would do the three pronged approach I would do the nutraceuticals and the food and everything else mm-hmm. and then I would do both low level low level laser light therapy as well as the PRP and oh so you'd add PRP and the light therapy PRP, okay I would I would bundle PRP with microneedling because I think they're very similar in that way. Okay. Uh, except PRP adds to the microneedling. It's a little more expensive though. It's a lot more expensive. Uh, yes, but if you are one of those people that wants everything, then you're, you're probably go going to want to go the the full gamut. So that's the way that I would approach it. Okay, that that makes sense. And the reason that I, I say that that you might not need everything, we're all walking this delicate balance where. I'm going to get results. 
And I went down this path 20 years ago. I said, all right, I'm going to try vitamin C for a month or two. I don't know, didn't work, so I'm going to try vitamin B for a month or two. Okay, it didn't work. And eventually you realize, wait, if I try everything possible for just two months, it'll be the end of my life and I want to try everything. And I haven't tried combinations of things either. So the pragmatic biohacker approach is, look, I'm going to do everything that might work that doesn't contraindicate. I'll just do it all at once. And we get the results, which is what I wanted. And then I can say, oh, I'll quit doing whatever this thing is. And maybe, this is going to sound amazing, maybe I had expensive pee for a while. But it's okay because I got the results I wanted versus this fear of, oh, my God, what if I took one thing I didn't need? Well, it probably isn't going to hurt you. It's a vitamin, for God's sake. So that's why I'm like, no, just go you know, go big or go home on, on getting something done. And when you're walking around, you feel the way you want. Your brain works. You look the way you want, and you've got it. And I start pairing back until you fall off the rails and go, oh, I guess I should do that. Like It's just so much easier. That's why I, I, you'll be surprised how many people are like, I don't know, just give me everything. Right, and they'll book something. They'll probably call. They'll go back to the episode with Amy Killen and be like, "Hey, I, I, I go hook me up with my PRP, whatever," uh, because their goal was, "I only have so much time, and I want hair, so just do it." I agree, and I think that's actually one of the things that a lot of our doctors are doing as well. The ones who really truly understand hair loss and thinning, and hair health in general, is they really just throw everything at the patient. And I'm of course coming at it from the medical standpoint yeah, yeah. and looking at the integrative standpoint as well i agree i think that if you do everything at least you know you did everything and mm -hmm. ultimately something is going to stick yeah or the com most likely is the combination that is going to stick because okay. it, it is a multifactorial ideology so no matter what you do you're making yourself healthier yeah and that's where the philosophy of the core plus targeted boosters came from. It's that, you know, core is wonderful on its own. It's supporting your body. But when you have these incoming stressors from all different angles, you just need more. Okay. So we're supporting some of these like foundations to health that if they aren't balanced, your hair can't thrive. I've got one more question for you. And Tess, we'll start uh, with you. No, I'm scared. <laughs> Good. You should be. <laughs> You know that Superhuman, my new uh, book on anti-aging, is in pre-order, and I've been pretty public about this. I'm going to live to at least 180. But people think I'm completely crazy pants for that. <laughs> How long do you think you're going to live? Uh, I think I will live till about 95. That's it? That is it. Even with Nutrafol? I think I might be tired at 95, though. No? Uh, these pictures of being old. Okay, what if when you were 95, you weren't tired? If I was 95 and I wasn't tired, then by all means, let's live as long as we can. So do you know how many 95-year-olds, when you ask them, say, hey, do you want to die right now because you're so tired? Do you know how many of them say yes? <laughs> A lot. No, no, very few of them. <laughs> and the ones who do usually do something about it. Yeah. Uh, my grandfather did, did that. He, he's like, I'm going on the all-wine diet. And like four days later, he was done, <laughs> right? Yeah. I just like to say my grandmother is 95. Uh -huh. And... You know, she she's just one of those people that's always curious. Yeah. I think if you're always curious about life, about everything, um, she just picked up yoga. Come on, that's 95? Awesome. Really? She does Qigong in the park? And that's my 85-year-old grandma and sent me a headstand photo the other day. Yeah. Like, oh, whoa, I can't that's even cool. do that. <laughs> You've got good genetics, Steph. I do, I do. Yeah, so I think you just step your game up a little bit. Okay, so I'll move it up to uh, 110. There you go. <laughs> and also, I mean, you guys are young, and like science is moving along. And we have this picture, especially if you've been through med school, where like old age is like diapers and tubes and monitors and wheelchairs and not knowing your own kids' names, right? And if that isn't what aging looks like, because you took care of your stuff 50 years before that, right? the picture changes. And now you're like, oh, I'm that wise person who like walks around and talks to people a third my age and tells them how to not be idiots when they're 50. Like, like that's cool. I would say my most important thing is to focus on health span, not really lifespan. Yeah. As long as like I have it all together and feel really great. I even call it within our company, your hair span. So if you're supporting your body for, um, for health, you know, you'll have better hair for longer. Did you just say you want to live as long as you have good hair? Yes. I, I think that's what I heard you say. <laughs> oh my God. That's why we're... What, what a great answer. <laughs> okay. It was good. All right, Sophia. Um, I would say I'm immortal. You're immortal. All right. Now, you got to unpack that a little bit. Is this because of your hair? Uh, totally. Um, because hair, you know, it's a spiritual, the length of the hair really does uh, have an energetic component. I, I don't often think about this. I think we are 
immortal in many ways. And this is like a reincarnation sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. That guy, I've been here before. I'll come back. I'll come back. With even better hair. Exactly. All right. <laughs> that that that's really my answer. Um, I think Tess gave a great answer. I would probably, if you were really to push me, I would mm-hmm. say around that age as well. I look at my grandma and I think, well, she's really thriving still, um, and uh, you know, she's having some back aches and some issues, but she's thriving. She's thriving because she is still her her spirit is is up. And I think having the spirit up is one of the most important things as well. Yes, the, having the health of the body is important, but the spirit is is super important. Cool. So self care and finding ways to support our, our soul and spirit is very important to me. And I think in that aspect, I think I am immortal. All right. I, I no one's ever answered that way before. Uh, so I, I could do say, you ask in, everyone this question. I do. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I switched from the you know perform better as a human being after Game Changers came out, which was you know five hundred samples and like really good data. And now that I'm talking about anti aging, uh, the the mission is to change the way people think about being old. And I think the world is missing a lot of village elders because a lot of old people are too tired and too sick and just infirm because of the what we're doing, the environment, the way they live. So what if when you're old, you're like, oh, I'm wise and highly functional. Then what does it look like? I have this great idea. I have a whole plan figured out. I just want to go to an island and have like a home with all my friends. (laughs) I live in a community. (laughs) Yeah, they call that Bali, right? (laughs) (laughs) Have a lot of fun. (laughs) (laughs) Beautiful. That's a good way to live a long time. All right. I'm I'm with you there, Sophia. Uh, I uh, appreciate you guys coming on Bulletproof Radio today. Uh, you're with Nutrafol, Nutrafol.com, and you have the cool survey. I'm super intrigued at the new hair biotic, and I think that the idea of personalizing what's going on for your hair is really important. I'm paying more attention to my hair, and I think that you guys are onto something here. So I appreciate you. This is your, I think, third time on the show, but we got on some stuff that we've never talked about before. And uh, if uh, I have you on again in a while, I'm going to follow up on that hair has energetic powers thing, because I think there's maybe something to that. Uh, and then we're going to have to talk about the effect of laser hair removal, but that'll be on another show. Have an awesome day. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 